Okay, in this video we're going to start talking about trig identities. So for these examples we're going to be using a packet here. So if you want a copy of this to follow along with, um, check the video description. There's a link in there, you can click that link, uh, open this up, print it out, and follow along if you'd like. Uh, in this video we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to do two simple examples here and talk about the process in general. And then uh, after that each example is going to have its own video. So we'll put these aside here. Okay, so what we have uh, in this packet, besides a bunch of examples, is uh, here's just a brief review of the uh, basic identities uh, that we talked about uh, much earlier. So there's the quotient identities, tangent is sine divided by cosine, uh, cotangent is cosine divided by sine, uh, the reciprocal identities, cosecant is 1 over sine, and so on. Uh, Pythagorean identities, so sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, uh, and these two related ones and the even and odd identities. Remember, sine is an odd function, so sine of negative theta is negative sine of theta. Uh, cosine is an even function, so cosine of negative theta is just cosine of theta. Um, and tangents, cosecant and cotangent are also odd, and secant is uh, even. So these are all properties we talked about before, and they uh, most of the time they will be pretty useful when doing trig identities. So anyway, here's two simple examples. So let's look at example one. Okay, so the basic idea with uh, trig identities is you want to take one of these sides, start on either side, there's, uh, we'll talk about the general process soon, but uh, start on one of the sides and only work on that side and then try and make it look like the other side. So here, it's probably going to be a little easier to make the left side look like the right side. So let's start on the left side. So cosine of x times tangent of x, cosine of x times tangent of x equals, so one thing we could do is say, okay, well tangent, so we still have the cosine here, but tangent is sine divided by cosine. Okay, so that's one of our uh, quotient identities. Okay. Uh, so then the cosines cancel, and then we're just left with sine of x. Okay, and that's what we wanted. Okay, we wanted to show that cosine of x times tangent of x equals sine of x. So that's uh, what we wanted to do, and we just did that here. Okay, so this is one of the uh, probably one of the simplest types of uh, establish the trig identity problems that we can have. Okay, so that's example one. Example two, uh, establish the identity. So same kind of thing here, just start on the left side and try and make it look like the right. Okay, so here, cotangent of theta times secant of theta times sine of theta equals one. So let's go ahead and establish this identity. So we'll start on the left side, cotangent of theta times secant of theta times sine of theta equals. So let's try the same thing we did before, where here we converted to sines and cosines. So we'll try that again. So cotangent of theta, uh, that's cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. Secant is 1 divided by a cosine of theta. And sine of theta is just sine of theta. Okay. So uh, notice here, cosine of theta on top, cosine on bottom, they cancel. Sine of theta on bottom, sine of theta off to the side, which that's the same thing as being on top, because that's like sine theta over 1. Um, so the sine of theta is like on the top, and it cancels with this 1 on the bottom. So what we uh, are left with is just 1. Okay, so one on top, one on bottom, just a one. That's all we're left with. And that's what we wanted. Okay, we wanted to show that this expression here equals one. Okay, so that's two simple examples of establishing trig identities. So let's look at this process in general. Okay, so what's kind of unfortunate with trig identities is there's not really a specific set of rules uh, that will work every single time. Um, but there are some general steps that you can take in no particular order, really. Um, Okay, so the general process is, uh, this is the one thing you're always going to do, always, always, always. Uh, always start on just one side and try to make it look like the other side. So in other words, don't manipulate both sides. Okay, so, you know, when you uh, solve an equation, things like that, you're going to do things on both sides. You're going to add numbers to both sides, uh, multiply uh, both sides by a number, things like that. Um, but for trig identities, you only start on one side and manipulate just that side to make it look like the other side. Okay, so that's what you're always, always, always going to do. Never mess with both sides. Start on either side and uh, just work on that one side only. Okay? So be very careful about that. So we see here, uh, always start on one side and try to make it look like the other side. Uh, apart from that, there's no general strategy that will work for every type of establish the identity problem. But uh, here are some things to try in no particular order. So uh, start with the side containing the more complicated expression. It's actually pretty rare that you won't uh, have to do this. Uh, it's, it's pretty rare that you'll be starting on the side with the less complicated expression. Uh, it may happen every now and then, but it's still pretty rare. Okay. Uh, rewrite sums and differences of quotients as a single quotient. In other words, get a common denominator. Uh, we'll see some examples of that. And uh, so that's like if you have maybe 1 over sine minus 1 over cosine, uh, you can get a common denominator there and simplify like that. Um, 
rewrite expressions in terms of sines and cosines. That's actually what we did for these first two examples. Okay, we took the tangent, rewrote it as sine divided by cosine, and in example two, we took the cotangent and the secant and rewrote those in terms of cosine and sine. Okay. Um, but it, you know, you might not. It might not always work to do that. It's it's something you could try, but it might not always work. Um, what else? Use the basic identities in the table above, as well as the complementary angle theorem if applicable. So uh, these basic identities in the table above, that's these that we talked about in the beginning of the video uh, that we covered uh, much earlier in earlier videos. So uh, these will come in handy sometimes. Like we actually use this in example one, and uh, we use this in example two, and also uh, this one in example two. So uh, factor. Factoring can reveal identities that were hidden and can lead to uh, reducing quotients. So I think we'll see an example or two of that uh, in one of the later videos. And also uh, keep your goal in mind. So related to this, uh, multiply by one or add zero in a useful way. So what does that mean? Um, so keep your goal in mind just means if it's uh, not really something we have to do so much for simpler examples like these. But if you have a more complicated example that you're working or a more complicated problem you're working on, um, then it you know, when you look at the left side, look at the right side, you want to make one side look like the other. It might not really be obvious, it might not jump out at you, you know, they might look completely different. You might not really have an idea of, of how to get there, but you could start trying some of these steps and always keep your goal in mind. So what you want to do is just think, okay, what would I have to do to this expression to make it look like this other expression? And so that's why you want to keep your goal in mind. And related to that, uh, you can often manipulate things by multiplying by one or adding zero in a useful way. So this is actually a common technique in math where you multiply by one in a useful way. Um, so if you have, if you're trying to get a common denominator, you know, you multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, right? So that's, uh, that's multiplying by one in a useful way. That's an example of doing that. And adding zero is also a common technique, a, a little less common, um, but still it's, it's done. Uh, it, people do it. So anyway, that's, uh, we'll see an example or two of something like this. Okay. Also, the complementary angle theorem. So remember, that was just uh, something like sine of pi over 2 minus theta equals cosine of theta. So remember, we talked about the complementary angle theorem um, in an earlier video. Okay, so that's, uh, the complementary angle theorem says a bunch of things. This is one of them. So it also says that uh, cosine of pi over 2 minus theta equals sine of theta. Okay, so cosine and sine have this kind of relationship here. Uh, the same kind of relationship exists between secant and cosecant and between tangent and cotangent. Okay, so that was covered in an earlier video. And sometimes it is useful uh, for trig identities and we will see examples of that uh, later on. So anyway, that's the general process here. Again, um, the only thing that you're always gonna wanna do in every single problem is start on one side, try to, make look, try to make it look like the other side. Okay, don't manipulate both sides at once. Just start on one side, leave the other side completely alone the entire time and try to make that one side look like the other side. Okay? And apart from that, uh, just try some of these in no particular order. And uh, it's pretty rare that you're going to start on the side with the less complicated expression, but it may happen every now and then. But anyway, that's the general process, and we're going to use this general process uh, in the examples coming up. So uh, examples one and two here, and example three is coming up in the next video.